Hello and welcome to this review of my generic Chinese Cherry MX knockoff keyboard. It was made for a brand called Ling Bao or something, and it's very Chinese to the point that the entire manual is in Chinese as well. Let me walk you through it. It reads, There's Win Win LED logo. It's brand fucking new, made in 2016, and it's one of the cheapest mechanical keyboards you can buy. I bought it for just $35, which included shipping from China. It came in this box, which came in this box, which was unfortunately quite badly damaged during transport. As you can see, there's a rather big dent in it here. But they had left enough leeway inside the box, so the board itself arrived unscathed, I'm happy to say. The box is, again, completely in Chinese, but I've been told the brand is called Ling Bao or something. Supposedly it's a gamer keyboard with all kinds of features, which we'll get to in a bit. According to the manual, it weighs 0.9 kilos, which is quite light. The construction feels okay, it's a bit hollow, but it's not as rickety as I'd thought. However, it is a particularly open construction. It has a metal top plate. Not the thickest or the heaviest, but I suppose it adds some structural integrity, and it's fastened together pretty well with these screws. But they're hex screws, so you'll need an Allen key for them. Note that the top plate is not a mounting plate, by the way, but I'll get back to that when I show the actual switches. The top plate also has what's presumably the Ling Bao logo embossed on it here, with a hole where the eye is. The bottom case is rather thin and hollow, and it's got two fairly big flip-out feet, which work well enough. The model sticker is again completely in Chinese, but there is a manufacturing date sticker on it too, here, which shows that it was made in April this year. It's got a 10 keyless layout, which means they just chopped the numpad off. This layout is very popular with gamers, but personally I find it a major hindrance as I rely a lot on the numpad, even when I'm at home not doing work. Luckily, they do offer an ISO layout, which I much prefer to ANSI, but strangely, they just left the backslash key out, which is weird. As for the switches, the store page mentioned that they used Utamu switches, which are a generic Chinese Cherry MX clone, and you can pick black linear ones or blue clicky ones. Naturally, I went for the blue ones because Cherry MX Black is a pile of dog shit, and I've already had over a dozen MX Black keyboards anyway. But when I got it, I found out it actually uses Gatoron switches, which is way more interesting. Gatoron is also a Chinese knockoff brand of Cherry MX, but it has gained some considerable notoriety recently. Their switches, particularly the black ones, have been reported to be much smoother than the actual Cherry MX switches, and indeed my loose Gatoron switches seem to corroborate that. Gatron Black in particular feels almost oily, in fact, almost like it's been lubricated, but I think it's just a different type of plastic. They remind me a bit of the vintage Cherry MX Blacks I reviewed recently, which are also much smoother than the switches Cherry produces nowadays. I'm disappointed to say that with the blue Gatrons in this board, the difference in smoothness isn't quite as obvious. In fact, they feel nearly the same, except slightly stiffer. These are 60 grams of force compared to the Cherry's as 50. The tactility is very faint, only a little stronger than that of Cherry MX Blue, and apparently the actuation point is a little higher up as well. All of these are good developments, but I had hoped for a more clear-cut improvement personally. The biggest difference is probably in the sound. Recently, I reviewed an IBM Model F, which is probably the loudest keyboard that I know. That is, until I ran into this thing. It's un-be-fucking-leavable. The switches themselves have a louder and even more high-pitched click than Cherry's own, which is already considered to have annoyingly high-pitched click, but the type of sound is a little different. Especially in the light open chassis of the Ling Bao, compared to the closed shell of, say, a G83000, the difference in sound is simply remarkable. Here, listen to this. It's just bafflingly loud. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? 
Another feature of this keyboard, which I'm sure you've seen already, is that it has backlighting. It has all kinds of settings that you control with the FN key, the manual blurbs on about it. You can make it dimmer or brighter, and you can choose between all kinds of patterns that cause varying levels of nausea, and of course, you can just turn it off. Of course, I could walk you through all the various backlighting patterns you can set the board to, so I will. And for added dramatic effect, I'll do it in the dark. Fn plus F9, F10, and F11 set the keyboard to various layouts that looked like rather specific gaming layouts or something, not quite sure. F10 in particular looks almost like a WASD layout with some weapons keys and a few other random things lighting up. Fn plus print screen does this fading and glowing effect, which looks almost like you're in a color therapy sauna or something. Fn plus scroll lock passes a wave over the keyboard, and you can set the direction that the wave moves in with Fn plus the left or right key, so you can change it like that, for example. This combination also affects a few other patterns. Fn plus pause does this diagonal open and close thing that looks like the title screen from an 80s game show or something, and again you can set the direction. Fn plus insert lights up the key you use for a few seconds. It's one of the less chaotic patterns, and you can also set it to the opposite, so that the whole board is on and the keys you press go off instead. Fn plus home simply switches them all on. It's the most quiet and least distracting pattern. Fn plus page up does this thing which <laughs> I can only describe as pandemonium. I mean, what the hell is going on here? Delete gives you this snake-like pattern, which is the default. It shows something similar when you start up the computer. Fn plus end simply switches it off. Although I've actually forced myself to use the keyboard with every single pattern for at least a day, this one is the best one for me because it's not as distracting. And finally, Fn plus page down gives you this kind of ripple effect on keys you press. It looks kind of cool when I do it with one key, but it goes totally nutballs when you type on them because the ripples go absolutely everywhere. And you'll see that in the typing demonstration. Overall, the backlighting is a bit of a gimmick. There's really no use for it at all, as even in the dark, I'd rather just use my desk lamp. Of course, it looks pretty fancy, and you'll find other people come over to look at it all the time, but I still think it's a bit vulgar and tasteless. Of course, having LEDs in every key comes with a secondary advantage, N-key rollover. They are diodes, after all. One thing I've found, however, is that they chatter like hell if you press many at a time. Here is a switch diagnostic tool I often use. When it detects chatter, it'll show up as dark purple. Ready? See how much it can make the keys chatter? It's pretty unbelievable. Gatorons have a lifetime of 50 million keystrokes per key, by the way, the same as gold-plated Cherry MX. The keycaps are thin and made out of ABS but they're double shot with clear plastic to give you translucent legends. Most of them have molding imperfections like this, and they're not that well made overall. And they have a really ugly font that I guess is supposed to appeal to gamers. I tried to replace them with actual Cherry MX double shots, but I found the problem, the metal plate I talked about isn't actually a mounting plate. It sits above the switches, they don't clip into it, which means Cherry keycaps hit the metal plates before they bottom out. The fit is also very loose, so they're not all that compatible. Which is a shame though, because the sound becomes much better with them, much fuller and bassier. Here, let me demonstrate. So, all in all, what do I think of it? Well, I'll be blunt, this is not a very good keyboard. I think it's rather lackluster and can do with improvements in lots of ways. But, that said, I didn't really expect that much, and in fact it's not that fair to expect all that much for just $35 shipped. 
A run-of-the-mill Cherry G80 3000 starts at around $70, twice as much as this keyboard, and in all fairness, I can't see where the money is going. Despite the cheapness of this keyboard, it features backlighting, better build quality, N-key rollover, and double-shot keycaps, all of which the Cherry doesn't have. Moreover, I prefer the switches. I had hoped for a larger improvement over standard MX Blue, considering the difference between black cherries and Gatorons, but they're still better. I mean, it's far from flawless, this keyboard, and the noise is almost intolerable if you don't like it, but really, this keyboard is really important. It proves that the term Chinese knockoff no longer means what it used to mean. People used to deride Chinese products as proverbially badly and cheaply made. But that's no longer valid. I'd go as far as to say this is a better product than the genuine deal. More Chinese products are going to appear on the market, and I have high hopes for some of them. Several new switch lines have been announced, including a Cherry Alps Hybrid switch, and a redesign of Cherry ML, among others. And who knows, they might turn out to be the real deal. Anyway, that's all we have time for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this with the ripple pattern on the LEDs.